Well, now that we have that, we should be able to use the techniques we talked about to uh, get this uh, um, electron configuration. So let's try working that through. Oh, Xenon. Okay. Um, okay, well, let's work that through. Now, um, all of a sudden, now I've got to change my mind again, and now I'm liking this approach better, where you do the neutral species first. So I'm going to do the neutral species first. So um, let's do the neutral tantalum. So I think you've seen that the core electrons here have a Xenon configuration. This, I guess, is Xenon. Okay, so if we were doing the neutral species using the Aufbau principle based on the periodic table, um, this, I guess, would be the 6s. So I would put two electrons there. All right, and now if we study the periodic table carefully, we can see that number 57 here, this is not number 58. Instead, from 57, we go down to the f block down below. Um, so that means that this is a row that actually has an f block. Um, and you can see that basically the f block is lower in energy than the d block, at least for neutral species. Um, um, so. Uh, at least if you ignore number 57, which is kind of a special case. But it looks like, for the most part, the F block comes before the D block here. So I'm going to fill out the F block. Now, what's the number for that F block? It's going to be 4F. Yeah, I yeah, don't I did give myself room for that. But that's given us down here. There's only two F blocks in the periodic table. So notice that um, we have a kind of a pattern here. The S block starts with number 1. But the P block doesn't start until number 2. And the D block doesn't start until number three. And the F block doesn't start until number four. So each, um, each more uh, advanced subshell, so to speak, starts in a higher principal quantum number as well. That might help us to remember that. The first subshell S starts with the first principal quantum number. But the, first, the next subshell P doesn't start until the second principal quantum number. Um, the third type of subshell D doesn't start until um, the third quantum number. And this fourth type doesn't start until the fourth quantum number. So this is 4f and this is 5f. Uh, but we're not all the way down here. We're only in 4f because this is the first time we ever used the f block. Uh, 5f would be if we were here. So that's 4f. How many columns are there in the f block? How many columns? Yeah, how many columns? Or how many valence electrons in the How many electrons? Yeah. If you count the columns here in your periodic table, you'll see there's 14 columns. So that must mean we're putting 14 electrons in here. All right, now after the f block, we can go back to here. And by this point, we're in 5D, 3D, 4D, 5D. Now, which column are we in in the D block? Five. So I should call this 5D5. So, that's where I keep looking at. I keep so this would be five. neutral tantalum. I thought you got that right the first time around. Well, no, you know what it is? I, oh, you did I, three. Okay. I jump, you know what it is? Is I confuse myself and just go one, two, three instead of looking oh, at Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. You were right. No. Oh. So this is in the third column of the D block. Okay. So there's three D electrons. Okay. 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 It's in the fifth column from the left overall, which means there's five electrons in the S and the D blocks put together. Um, all right. So yeah, I have to be uh, more careful about that. All right. We're in the fifth column from the left, which 
those five electrons go two here and three here. But maybe it's better just to say we're in the third column of the D block, because that would give us three electrons. All right, so this would be neutral tantalum. Okay. All right, now I'm going to have to write the tantalum five plus, because that's what our work told us we're focusing on here. So I need to take away five electrons. Well, according to this rule, first I would take the electrons away from the P block. But there is no valence P block because we're a transition metal. And we're not going to take them from the core P blocks. So we go on to the S block. How many electrons can I take out of the S block? Yeah, so there, that takes away two electrons. So there is no S block, so I don't need to uh, write that anymore. But now that accounts for two of the electrons. Now the next electrons I'm going to take away from the D block. And how many electrons do I take from there now? All three, because I want to get up to five overall. Um, and should I take any more electrons away? No, because that's five. So where, where are the remaining electrons? Yeah, in the F block. Now, the one thing I don't like about this approach here is I'm not sure if these would even still be considered valence electrons, because they're actually kind of so buried in inside the molecule, I think it would be pretty rare to actually ever lose these electrons. So maybe it's a little bit of a misnomer to call this the valence F block. Maybe I should just call it the outer F block. It's the furthest out F block we have, but I think it would be rare to actually use these uh, performing chemical compounds. Okay. Uh, but if, uh, if we put that aside, we can still use this idea. First we took the two electrons from the S, and then we took the three electrons from the D. And we're not going to take any electrons uh, from the F unless we're really forced to. Um, those are pretty deep in the molecule already. So let's see. It seemed like the first time through that yeah. didn't quite work out. So what was I, the confusion? I, um, I just did it wrong. <laughs> but you know what was, the, what was confusing you about that? I think I was like forgetting that, like, that I knocked the whole thing out. And yeah, so you were just going from three to two. Yeah. But we need to take three electrons out of the D block. Yeah. yeah. But I have a question for you. Like, I saw a notation for this problem as xenon D, uh, 5 D zero. Oh, yeah. Is that equivalent? Yeah, sure. That is, it doesn't make sense that it would be equivalent. What does this tell us? It tells us that there are no electrons in the 5D block. In fact, we could go even further and we could say also 6S0, because there's no electrons there. 6P0, if you really want to be, um, if, you, if you want to put in unnecessary detail, you could also say that there are zero electrons in the 7S block and the 7P block. All right, so all this is saying is that we don't have electrons in these places. Usually we don't consider that interesting enough to mention, but if you wanted to, you could mention that. Uh, for full credit, I think all you have to do is this, just 4F14. Okay. So it doesn't matter which way you write it here. Okay. Uh, these are equivalent to each other. It's just uh, conventional that we don't say where the electrons are. I mean, theoretically, there's also an eight, there might be an eight level and a nine level. So we don't want to say everywhere the electrons aren't. We want to say where the electrons are. Right. And, it, it's, and it's understood that if you don't say there's any electrons there, it's understood that there aren't any electrons there. So for simplicity, this would be the easiest way to go. Okay. Although even when you were first working out the problem, maybe it makes more sense to write explicitly there's zero here and zero here, so you can count how many electrons you've taken away to make sure you're getting it right. Yeah. I think it helps okay. to write the neutral yeah. version yeah. first. Yeah. All right, so we saw two ways of doing this. Um, the other way of doing this would just be to put them in in the first place. Um, you could just say, well, if it has uh, five electrons, that just gives us the, the 14 in the F block. Again, I don't... That, that seems a little weird here, because again, these aren't really valence electrons, in a sense, in the F block. So, so maybe, maybe now, maybe in some cases, it is better to write the neutral first. Okay.